Recovery Sort Of is a podcast where we discuss recovery topics from the perspective of people living in long-term recovery. This podcast does not intend to represent the views of any particular group, organization, or fellowship. The attitudes expressed are solely the opinion of its contributors. Be advised, there may be strong language or topics of an adult nature. Welcome back. It's Recovery Sort Of. I am Jason, a guy who used to think I had integrity. And I'm Billy. I'm a person in long-term recovery. I'm Jenny. I'm also a person in long-term recovery. Uh, Billy, maybe you know this, maybe you don't. It just popped into my head as we were doing the <laughs> opening. But is integrity, I- I'm imagining it has to be related to the word integral, right? Like there's got to be some correlation of those word stems that... Uh, I don't know that for sure, but yes, there it, has to it be. It seems like it, yeah. But but integral, in my mind, the understanding of what integral means is really very different from integrity. Like integral is like, oh, it's a necessary piece, whereas integrity is like this thing we were... We're about to talk about if you can have it or not. So it doesn't seem so necessary. Yeah. And I think integrity, again, when I look up the definitions of these words, I'm like, oh, it means that too. Like it has a couple different meanings and a couple different applications. I mean, when you're building a structure, you talk Uh, about whether it has integrity, you know, which is completely different from what we're talking about today. But, you know, that's a use of integrity that isn't, you know, so these words tend to have a, a, a variety of meanings. And I think sometimes picking out which ones are specific to recovery really helps. I I almost wonder if all of them are really specific to recovery, like if they're not encompassing different pieces. Because I feel like the last time we did a spiritual principle, and my brain is terrible because I don't remember what it was, but I think that one also related to buildings. (laughs) (laughs) We were talking about being structurally something. Yeah, Yeah. I don't know. That's interesting. But I, I could see where integrity, as in the soundness of a building, staying up is pretty integral to the building right? that would make sense <laughs> right. so um yeah I, I guess some of the definitions i came up with and i had this same struggle trying to find some kind of either miriam webster's definition or some kind of sciency definition that means something um i found the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles hmm. comma moral uprightness i was like okay that's kind of cool Um, Another one was the state of being whole and undivided, which I thought was fascinating. And I liked it a lot from that angle when I was thinking about it. Um, A third one, firm adherence to a code of especially moral or artistic values, colon, incorruptibility. Yeah, that and that. So I found something very close to that as well. And that was the one I thought fit most for recovery. You think? Yeah. I I mean, at least for me, that that seemed to be what my understanding of integrity in my recovery, you know, Hmm. means it was closest to that. Interesting, because I think of the ones I've read so far, definitely the first one, the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles, moral uprightness. I feel like that's the one I've always associated closer to what we're trying to do with integrity, Hmm. more so than like this firm adherence to a code but that's interesting i like the code definition because when i was reflecting on integrity you can have integrity for your code which you think is like uh good and i know you, we can talk uh, about uh, your definition uh, of good and bad well even but though then, i don't believe in good and bad they're uh, easy to use because we all know what we're talking about yeah. when we say them so it's fine to okay. use them <laughs> well i mean and then someone can have integrity for evil too that's hmm. so you could have like bad intentions and your you show integrity for your evil intentions well even not in the good and bad sense i mean someone that's let's say a christian who's adhering to christian values might have a different perspective than someone that's like a buddhist or a jewish person in a certain situation and they're going to adhere to their if they have this religious integrity they're going to adhere to those principles a little more and it doesn't necessarily make one right or wrong. I think it's more like a how you're guiding the ship sort of thing. 
I'm almost wondering if this is why I see integrity a little bit different than you guys. Because I, you know, we talk, okay, so if you've never been to a Narcotics Anonymous meeting, uh, if you go to quite a few of them, you might eventually hear someone say, or you might read in the literature, that uh, we, we tend to hold on to this like terminal uniqueness, right? And, and that's definitely me. I'm a guy who always feels like, oh, I'm a little different than other people. And so when I've looked at this integrity thing, I have never thought of it as like, oh, I need to follow somebody else's code. Like, or, or at least I didn't want to think of it like that, right? Is I want to be, follow my own. I want to be honest and have strong moral principles, whatever that mm. vaguely means to myself. Um, but that's interesting that, yeah, so there, there's these different codes and integrity. I, can you be in, can you have integrity for evil? That was interesting, Jenny. I was trying to think through that. So like in my mind, even if you're, you know, uh, uh, somebody out there committing crimes and doing terrible things or whatever, the integrity piece would be, like, oh, well, I live by the code where I don't I don't steal from any of my fellow, you know, villains or something like that. Maybe that's your integrity. But it always seems to have like a it's like the evil person is carrying this one positive trait that they live by into their evilness. I've never thought about it as integrity for the evilness itself. Well, that sounds like the honor among thieves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what um, I think of as integrity. But in I think sense. like I don't think I, that it's, this is going to go in a fantasy land. But like like evildoers integrity like you know, like they are dedicated to fucking shit up. Like <laughs> they are like their code is chaos. Huh. You know? Well, or is someone who's in a gang, like do they have integrity if they adhere to their gang lifestyle of like, oh, mm -hmm. if someone else comes into our neighborhood, we kick the shit out of that person. Right. Is that integrity? Like do they have integrity? I kind of think so I the think way you're so saying too, right? <laughs> okay. Okay. So, all right. So a couple more definitions I got. Um, an unimpaired condition colon soundness which i thought was kind of interesting i think it talks more about the building structure mm -hmm. like we were saying but it kind of reminded me we just did the sound healing episode and i was like huh unimpaired because we are fully sound fully vibrating right i was like huh okay it's an interesting <laughs> one and then uh one of the last ones i got was the quality or state of being complete or undivided completeness and i thought uh you know they got a couple of them talking about wholeness or completeness or undividedness that's an interesting take on integrity i don't generally think of even though i like it now yeah i didn't i was didn't assimilate that to hmm. integrity either right i guess what i was trying to think through when i read it i was like maybe there's this piece of like integrity is actually having all the parts of me acting as one you know what i mean almost like having that group conscience in a, in a, a group format where we all have the same feelings and belief or at least we're all coming together in that conversation and coming to the same outcome i felt like maybe integrity for us isn't necessarily following some specific code but maybe it's more all the pieces us of us are aligned in the direction we're going and we're not feeling that like well part of me thinks i'm supposed to do this but part of me also thinks i could hurt people if i do that and i should do it this way and you know what i mean that feels like non-integrity i guess like yeah. we're not sure of ourselves or i don't know yeah, that's tricky. I, I mean, I guess I'd say I just picked one and was like, oh, this is what integrity means <laughs> to me. I don't know. These other ones don't fit. <laughs> I got <laughs> like, you. Yeah. So you're, it's, integrity is like a certainty of mine. I'm just going right back to the code thing. Like, you know, right. this is my code. I'm certain this is the way we go. Hmm. I'm so, whole in my decision. Before we even get into the, the literature pieces of it, because I did find some stuff in the literature. I found some stuff in the science. I'm sure you guys have brought what you found. What is integrity for you or what has it been throughout your your either life or your recovery or like what's the meaning you give it? Uh, for me, I mean, I immediately think to one of those simple sort of recovery cliches is like mean what you say and say what you mean, mm. you know, that when you say you're going to do something, you show up and you do it. You know, that it was basically that simple. And that wasn't a person that I was when I was using. I was the person that would tell you. Whatever you wanted to hear. Oh, you're moving Saturday, Jason. You need a hand? Yeah, I'll be there. When Saturday came, I might be there. I might not. Depends on what happened Saturday. You know, right. if something better came along, I was going to do that other thing. And I probably wouldn't even call you and tell you I wasn't coming. I would just not show up. Hmm. And in living that way, I didn't realize that that contributed so much to my low self-esteem, my low self-worth, my low sense of, you know, value because my word didn't mean shit it didn't mean anything to me you know let alone people around me so 
you know, that all contributes to that feeling of like, I suck. I might as well use. Mm. Yeah. No, I can definitely relate to a lot of that. What about you, Jenny? Did you hear much about integrity before? So, and this is interesting. Sorry. I, I'm, I know I'm holding up your answer here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> God damn it. Uh, <laughs> No, I'm thinking like, because you went into Alcoholics Anonymous first, right? So you have like maybe that more traditional 12-step exposure where you're probably going to hear the word integrity, you know, quite a few times. But then I feel like you have this unique lens because you you moved over to the Recovery Dharma program. And I don't know that Buddhism talks about integrity a ton. And you can inform us now and I'll shut up. Um so yeah, it's funny. I don't I don't know that I hear the word integrity in Buddhist lit, but <laughs> but it's it's underlying, you know. Um, Is it but let me go back to AA. So yeah, when I started AA, I think that what grabbed me at first was the how honest, open, willing, and because honest honesty was new to me, and what a relief it was when I started being honest. Because mm. um, you know, actually, I grew up like I grew up in a dysfunctional household where like they'll say like honesty's a priority but nobody did it <laughs> so i was like super confused about what honesty was honesty is a priority jenny but don't tell your father we did this yeah yeah exactly yeah right. pretty much yeah and then um but and then the other principles like open-mindedness and willingness and just you know not blindly trusting but like you know using your head like okay i can see that that's working for them and i don't see any pitfalls all right i'm, I'm gonna i'm willing to try that you know like not following blindly but just you know doing what was shown to you yeah so um how that changed when i went to buddhism um i'm thinking about the eightfold path and that it like you know it lays out hmm, i'm kind of stuck on this one it's okay cause yeah I, I actually think you're, you're gonna end up stuck on it because <laughs> I, have a, I have a reason why we'll come back around to that <laughs> later no worries i, I was mean, curious though <laughs> you know what i i think what what drew me to buddhism though was uh, the the questioning, you know, like that wasn't always welcome in AA, you know, like questioning the system, whereas Buddhism was like, yeah, heck yeah, we like questions, question everything. Right. And so it felt more comfortable. And um, I still like principles and values. I was in the 12 steps. I just like AA's, I mean, Buddhist approach to like, if you don't like that, let's question it. Let's explore it. Whereas AA would kind of like shut that down like nope just do what i say um so all right well, how about you jason what how about me <laughs> so i okay um kind of along the lines of what billy talks about like i i do believe in in all those things he said uh i think they were happening in my life very similarly right i, I couldn't be the person i really wanted to be in my life while i was getting high at that point right i was I would make the promises, and, and when I made them, I wanted that, right? Oh, yeah, next Monday, I definitely want to get clean and get a job and get my shit together and show you guys how you could be proud of me, right? And it just, I wasn't capable of living it, which felt like ass every time. Um, and then, you know, you get in recovery, you start to learn some stuff. I think throughout my recovery journey, I have felt I am a man of integrity. I'm like, look, I, I show up when I say I will. I do the things I say I do. I say I'm about what I say I'm about when I live. Um, but I will say that more recently I have kind of, and especially doing the research for this episode, I'm looking at it and like, I don't think integrity is, is necessarily what I have now. And I don't know that it's what I'm looking to get either. Uh, I think there's a different concept that maybe doesn't exist well with integrity that I am going for. Uh, and that's where I hope we end up getting to, talking about that at some point. Well, one other interesting thing I thought about with integrity, at least as a as a young person, I was raised and went to Catholic school, and I felt like when they talked about all these morals and values that we're supposed to have, that we were supposed to do all of them perfectly. And because I couldn't do them perfectly, I didn't feel like I had any integrity. Right. And I don't know that perfection is necessarily the measurement for integrity. Um, yeah. I guess when you're talking about that wholeness or soundness, maybe it is. But that's why I don't like that so much. <laughs> <laughs> because I could never aspire to that, you know, and no one can, obviously. I mean, even if I think I'm a person that has great integrity, I'm still going to have times in my life where I go against my own moral and value code. You know, I'm going to make yeah. mistakes. The difference was early on in my life, I did it like, 
over and over and over again, and I wasn't looking at the pattern of behavior to try to do anything different. It was like, like you said, I, I wanted to be a person that, you know, helped people and was kind and was honest, and I wanted to be all those things. I just didn't know how to follow through when I said I was going to do it. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. I, I just think, I guess, there's this, there's this piece of we we put so much pressure on ourselves right like okay obviously looking back even from here my life was not a life of integrity back then right but i think now we hold each other and ourselves more more so than anybody to such high standards i'll be the guy who can be a man of integrity in my actions 19 out of 20 times but if i'm fucking it up one out of 20 times i say oh i don't have integrity and that's just not true because we're not perfect just like you're talking about right and we're we're so hard on ourselves um what you're describing is exactly why i don't call myself a buddhist even though people are like but you go to a buddhist meeting every week it's because i'm not doing it perfectly mm -hmm. and so i won't refer to myself as a buddhist right. i i'm just someone who studies buddhism and practices buddhist principles and and right back to that conversation with denise last week right the kindergartners how many of you kindergartners are singers dancers writers they all are right and then how many of you high schoolers are oh, there's one or two because we beat it out of them because if you don't do it perfect in our world you can't say you're it and that's just sad man yeah and sad. and i think for me when i see that process i recovery really helped break that ideology for me that i had to be perfect in all these things or else i wasn't those things so like and when i came to understand as we talked about with a lot of these spiritual principles, like realistically, most of them shouldn't be practiced to like this a hundred percent all the time standard. You know what I mean? Like that's right. probably not what we want to do. You know, mm -hmm. we want to be somewhere in the middle and, you know, not being perfect is okay. I mean, in the 12 step process, anyway, we have specifically some, some steps and some, uh, you know, doing a daily inventory and things like that where we're looking to see like hey where am i fucking up and like when i did my 10th step you know i remember talking with my sponsor and them saying well you probably don't have any days where you're perfect like if you don't have if you have a bunch of days where you're like well i was just perfect today and i have nothing that i regret and nothing that i did wrong and no mistakes that i made you probably don't have an honest assessment of yourself <laughs> yeah, you know right. there's going to always be a case where i maybe said something a little harshly to somebody that I didn't need to say or, you know, got Superman flicked off somebody driving down the road that did that really need to happen? Like, mm -hmm. you know, that's that process of recognizing that every single day I'm probably going to fall a little bit short. I mean, now it's way better when it's less intentional, right? Right. right. <laughs> but there's still always going to be this room for improvement. Oh, that reminds me of just my favorite line from from our literature, which is we have a hard time seeing where we've been wrong because we usually intend to be right. Mm -hmm. And it's so hard to stop, like you're saying, and be self-reflective throughout the whole day because you, you got to live, right? You got to like go into autopilot sometimes. And yeah, yeah, we're, we're making mistakes. Huh? I was just sitting here uh, looking. We're about to go into what our literature, the Narcotics Anonymous literature says about integrity but i was like man one day i want a, a database of like every 12 step or, or non-12 step support groups literature that mm. i can just like conveniently search for the word <laughs> what do these other programs have to say about it maybe they got like good stuff but um so i i didn't find much in our in our basic text in narcotics anonymous basic text i'm not saying our god damn it uh but it works how and why Integrity is the consistent application of spiritual principles, no matter what the circumstances. Leaders who demonstrate the quality inspire our trust. We serve best when we display an honest respect for the trust placed in us by others. Fidelity and devotion to that trust reflect the personal integrity of our servants. When we choose members to serve us, we often look for integrity as a sign that they are trustworthy. So, I think the first thing that stands out to me before I even get into like what any of this says is that the way this reads feels really creepy and weird to me. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> like just too many words about like leaders who demonstrate this quality, inspire our trust. And I don't know. It just felt weird. It felt like something you would read for people going to serve in Congress or something. Yeah, <laughs> who, who, who wrote that like, definition? Well, I don't know. It was, it was in the works how I, so I guess the fellowship did, but. 
What, oh, what that's about from what, NA? Yeah, yeah, oh, it's I from Narcotics that. Anonymous. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Um, so, what about integrity is the consistent application of spiritual principles, no matter what the circumstances? So, this is a little weird to me because this feels like what we were just saying consistent application to me in my mind again and this is probably where my human mind does it a little re- weird it says that's got to be every time and i don't think that's what the word consistent means but no. that's what i hear yeah <laughs> it's definitely right. what i hear it means maybe what like regularly. nine out of ten times right right regularly <laughs> right. right right so that's interesting why do i read that as all the time well because we're absolutists i mean that's one of the things as part of being like an obsessive compulsive personality, you know, as, as being what I define as an addict, like that's me. I want everything to be like black and white and super clear. And there's always a right and there's always a wrong. And it's just not the way that the world works. And like, say, as we talk about these principles, we start to realize like, yeah, they're not absolute things that, you know, there's either this or that, and you're either one or the other. Like we're all somewhere in the middle. What do you think about the idea of no matter the circumstances? Because that part bothers me a little bit. That sounds like no matter what, I should be doing this thing. Like, hey, we're going to blow your head off if you stole this uh, from the meat and basket. Yes, I stole from the meat and basket. I practiced integrity, right? Like, now I don't have a head. That seems pretty fucking stupid to me. Um, I know. It's an extreme. I get it. <laughs> yeah. But and I, I guess the yeah. point is, like, when it says no matter what, this sounds like even when being a man of integrity or a woman of integrity or whatever we want to call it, when you practice integrity, it could harm you. And that's still. So I I hear that a little differently and I'm going to use a different quote and that's not from recovery literature, but I had it because I liked it a lot and I was going to share it anyway. So it's actually from CS Lewis and it says doing the right integrity is doing the right thing all the time, even when no one is looking, especially when no one is looking. That sounds more like me putting pressure on myself to be perfect yeah. again all the time. <laughs> but it's that that idea that, you know, I shouldn't just do the right thing because, you know, uh, people are watching or, you know, it's going to gain me some notoriety or it's going to make people think better of me. Like the idea of integrity is like, these are my values. I live by my values. You know, that's what that's what gives me self-worth and self-respect. Does that make you feel pressure? Because that makes total sense to me. Say it again. Does that make you feel pressure? Like a- everything makes me feel uh, pressure. <laughs> apparently. So that's I like that. I like that quote. It's like it's simple, and I you know like I, I think some of these definitions we're reading are like you know like overcomplicating it. But I love that simple definition. It makes me think of like you know how we're all the world's moving to like self checkout, mm. and how easy it is to steal stuff now. I don't like. I choose not to. It's like, even though no one's looking, like, I'm not going to throw the extra thing in my bag. Here like, you go. You just did it for us. You took us back to integrity for evil because I could absolutely see, in my belief, with the way the world's set up and how the unequal distribution of wealth, I think it's integrity to fucking steal as much as you can. Hmm. <laughs> to even out the fucking twisted world that should not be this way. So <laughs> that's, yeah. That's okay. my morals that's and beliefs. your code. Like, okay. And I mean, and and, yeah. and and I'm not going into the store and stealing, but I kind of champion people who do. I'm like, fucking go for it. But man. you're like, not personally doing it. No, I'm not personally. Okay. How come? Because I don't feel like dealing with the consequences of the stupid world. Yeah. There's Basically. Consequences and risk. So it's your mood. Okay. So. Well, it comes into these two places of integrity. I have integrity where I want to screw over the system because I believe it should be way more equal for everybody. But there's also the integrity of I want to show up and be there for my family. Which I can't do if I get locked up and serve jail time. Right. That one's more important to me right, right now. That's more. That's the code. Is, is yeah. the dad code. Gotcha. So I got I got priorities that mm-hmm. keep me from living out my integrity dreams of robbing <laughs> from all the stores. Yeah, and in essence, for for me, I mean, I think that's sort of how integrity works. Is I look at what my values are, sort of 
place them in sort of an order of which ones are more important than other ones. And, you know, like, for example, back to the moving thing, like if I said, hey, Jason, you know, I'll come help you move on Saturday. And then my kid ends up in the hospital. I don't go, well, I told Jason I was going to help him move. I got to show up. But I can call you and say, hey, my kid's in the hospital. Or even if I don't, you know, it's like my kid's in the hospital. My integrity is that, you know, my family comes first. You know, so there are different uh what our values are matters in how we practice our integrity well and it's interesting for a situation like yesterday and this is more of a let me, let me come to a minor situation instead of taking it to an extreme right um we no were heads going are coming off in this no scenario. heads are coming okay. off in this scenario there was no mass shootings nothing <laughs> uh so anyway we're, we're going down to this festival uh yesterday and we you know my mom i was like hey you want to meet us there we'll walk around we'll look at stuff we'll have a good time so we we did that right before we go, she texts me in the morning and was like, hey, one of our family members wants to do this and meet here and do. And I like I was like, yeah, that's that's just not going to work for my life. Right. And and the integrity was for me, I would already be spending enough time outside the house, taking care of all the kids, doing all this stuff. I just wanted to go home afterwards. That was important to me. I could see a, a version of this where my mother feels like, oh, he, he didn't show up for me or didn't. You know what I mean? Like, because she was re- making a request for me, too. And that's where I feel like this is all. It's almost like we're talking about a thing that can't possibly be talked about, because while we can all think we're living in integrity and maybe our family, my family members thought I was living in integrity last night in my house. Maybe my mom didn't. Maybe my other family member who wanted us to come down and meet up didn't. Right. And. I just think from some lens, we're all going to be like, oh, yeah, well, well, Billy's the integrity guy because he showed up for his son in the hospital. But Billy's not the integrity guy because 18 people were dependent on him that day. And like there's so many lenses. I almost feel like we're all going to end up, especially going by a definition of all the time, we're all going to end up being judged or judging ourselves either way. Right. But to me, that gets back to the whole uh recovery principle of it doesn't matter what everyone else thinks about me. It matters about am I living and being the person that I want to be. My Ultimately, my integrity is to myself, to me, to be honestly who I am, to be the best version of myself that I can be, to live truest to my morals and values. I mean, who knows? I have some values in an order now that three or four years from now, I might say, oh, I got these a little bit flipped around. I need to You know, maybe, fuck, who knows? Maybe work does need to come before family. Who knows? You know, whatever. But Can I interject real quick? Mm -hmm. So that's, it's when you know better, you do better. Because it sounds like integrity was like, you got to be consistent. But then you learned, you know, like your your integrity changed because you grew. And like. Well, and and this is kind of what I think I might be trying to get at, actually, is sort of what you just said, Billy, is that integrity feels like something we can hold others to. Mm-hmm. And I don't like it from that aspect because we could just say authenticity instead of integrity to be true to ourselves. And that feels way less pressure to show up in a certain way. I can show up however I am being authentic. Right. Mm -hmm. And also it's there's no room for other people to judge that. That's awesome because when you brought up that you would steal groceries, I was like, yeah, you should. Go ahead. <laughs> like I, I wasn't mad about it. I was like, me personally, I'm not going to steal because it's not a good place for me. Right. But then when you were like, I would do it, I'm like, cool. <laughs> but you. that's where I'm wondering, like, mm-hmm. authenticity doesn't feel like we can put external judgments on people with it. But it sounds like the same thing you were just saying you think integrity to yourself mm-hmm. is. Yeah. I, and I'm trying to just think through that mm-hmm. as far as what the – I mean, I guess authenticity – could mean an adherence to a moral code but i guess well but it has room for flexibility for times when that moral code just isn't what's making sense for you maybe it just happens to be a day where your moral code says you know i always show up for my mom when she needs me but her car breaks down and you just work 22 hours or something and you're exhausted and can't maybe that's your authentic moment but that's not integrity or at least wouldn't be judged as an integrity by other people but it, there's no room for judging authenticity. You showed up how you were able to show up that day, the best of your ability. Well, part of that, too, is that, you know, what what am I looking at myself and doing honestly the best that I can? Or am I just making excuses to to not? Yeah, you know, because and this is where it goes back to for me when I was using I. 
was doing the best I can. Most of the time, my intention was to show up when I said I was mm-hmm. going to show up and do things I said I was going to do. But it was inconvenient or something better came along. So I just went and did that other thing without even a lot of thought as to the consequence of making that decision. You know what I mean? Like I didn't right. have any sort of moral guideposts or, or uh, you know, moral markers to be like, hey, you should know, you know, you told Jason you were going to show up. You could at least give him a phone call, tell him you're not, or at least let him know something came up or, or whatever, instead of just not doing anything and then being like, well, fuck it. Right, you know. right. You remember that video I sent to, I think I sent it to all of us a while back. It was like 24 minutes long and explained dopamine levels and how people would stab people for cold water after walking through a desert if they were thirsty enough and all that. I do kind of remember that, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, but same idea, like when... In my mind, what you just described was on the day you made the promise, you probably had a dopamine level of 60 or 65, or maybe you were already high and had a dopamine level of 110. Who the fuck knows? And you felt good, and you said, yeah, man, from a place of feeling good, I'll definitely show up and help you out. I don't mind. And then the day came, and your body said, dude, you have a dopamine level of 40. You're not getting out of bed. Or, you know, you have a dopamine level of 40, and the only thing that's going to heal you is going to do this thing over here. It'll take you up to 70. You'll feel good enough to live. Going to do that thing you said you were going to do, that's going to take you down to 30. And you can't afford that because people don't get out of bed at 30. And so you just did what you needed to do in the moment. And it's like, I think that's this thing of integrity is we all want other people to show up and hold true to what they said a week ago, even if it's harming them now, because it's good for us. No, you better show up with integrity, Jenny. You told me you'd bring that pie this week. I don't give a fuck if it's changed since then. and It's not good for you anymore. Come to my campfire and bring your pie, God damn it. That's uh, what we need. Yeah, I was going to say, I, don't, I mean, at least for me personally, that's not the case. If someone said, hey, my mental health is, I can't do this. Right, you'd be like, right. all right, whatever. I mean, I, Cause that's just me. <laughs> yeah, well, your integrity probably includes like having friends that are more understanding. Yeah, and I guess there's always going to be times where what you said is going to happen. That is true. But at least in my using life, that was like every fucking day yeah, and I was. consistently, but when do I sort of look honestly, do an honest self-assessment and be like, you're not a person that shows up for people or you're not a person that doesn't steal. Like, you right. know, so stop quantifying yourself as that person because this is the person that you truly are. No, no, and no, no. where I lacked integrity was in what I thought thought about myself or the person that I thought that I was and then who I actually was based on the actions and decisions that I demonstrated in my life because if you would have asked me I'd have said oh yeah I show up for things I'm gonna do oh yeah I'm an honest person yeah but none of my behaviors were in alignment with that so I had no like personal integrity as to living by you know, the values and and codes that I thought were important that I also wanted to hold other people to (laughs) because I wanted to hold everybody else to that same shit too and judge the shit out of them when they didn't do it. Right. And then couldn't figure out the confusion in my own mind of why I felt like such a piece of shit and why I had no self-worth. You know, it's like it's like that paradox of of like I say I believe these things are important. I think they're really important, but then I'm not living by those things. And that keeps me stuck in this, you know. And and I think from my understanding of that, right, and I think it's easier to do if we do like a, a, a physical need because our society doesn't like to, you know, acknowledge any other needs besides, you know, food and shelter and clothing apparently or something. But uh, say you, you were in that situation, you were born, you grew up, you, you know, believed you were a man of integrity and yet you have no job, no food ever. And you have to go around and steal food and stand on the corner and beg for money and this, that, and the other, right? These are things that aren't going to necessarily fit into what you believe is integrity. And yet you have to meet your survival needs first. It doesn't matter if you have integrity when you don't have fucking food. You got to get food first, right? And then once you can meet your survival needs and move up to the next level of Maslow's hierarchy of needs and then talk about personal development and character then you have space for that because your survival needs are met and there's safety there. And it's like, oh, okay, well, I don't have to worry about food on a daily basis anymore. So now I can move to bigger things like, oh, shit, I've been stealing from these places. That's terrible. Maybe I should pay them back, right? But it's the same thing with these emotional needs that we're not acknowledging because we can't measure them, 
right? It's the same thing when you're in that moment and you have so much pain inside that the only thing you can do is seek survival for the next by the next thing that makes it relieving or soothing, right? You're going to do that. And then the time comes, when do you ask yourself why you're living that way and not in tune? When those needs finally get met and you can move to a different level of needs being met. And I feel like, again, we're we're just looking back and holding ourselves responsible all the time and blaming ourselves. Like we're so hard on ourselves. We put so much pressure on ourselves, right? Even Even looking back at our history at a time when we woke up every day and could do nothing fucking different. We look back and judge ourselves over it and say, well, when was I going to step up and do it better? And it's like, we couldn't have. Yeah, and I don't know, maybe that judgment's not the right word, but I... Do people deserve to feel bad when they consistently do harmful things to others? I mean, I guess that's... I guess that's the question for me. It's like, well... Should I have felt good and justified my actions because I was emotionally sick? I don't know. I, I don't feel like I should. <laughs> like, I gotcha. You know what I mean? Like, I, I feel like I still there's still accountability there. And again, maybe you make the decision that this is the person that I want to be and I'm going to be a person who lies, steals and cheats. And that's just my lifestyle. And that's, you know. Yeah. That's okay. Maybe they wouldn't suffer so much with the because at least for me, so that lack of integrity I attribute to being why I felt so bad about myself and why I thought of suicide because I wasn't living up to the person that I thought I wanted to be or the person that I thought I should be. It's hard to say whether that was a value that right. was put on me by society or whether that was one I really genuinely came up with on my own. But something inside of me felt so bad, and I felt like such a piece of shit that death felt better than living that way. Yes, but you can't understand how when you're in the throes of, like, death feels better than living this way, why you don't have time or space to address why you're living that way. Like, you're just trying to survive because you feel like you're in so much pain. And I'm not saying acting outside of your integrity didn't contribute but i don't think it was the i think there was an egg first right like that was yeah. that was the chicken later you know what i mean that that tied in and added to it i don't know that it was the initial cause i guess yeah i hear you and and i will say i mean a lot of my first introduction to recovery there was a lot of having to let go of this guilt and shame piece you know that I felt like, at least for me, that idea that saying, oh, I'm an addict. That's why I did all that cruddy, dumb shit. Like, I don't have to, like, own that in my spirit as being right. this corrupt, you know, sick being. Like, I don't know, that, that I'll, I'll use the word excuse, even though it's not exactly what I mean. Right. But that excuse of saying I was an addict and I had this disease, like, freed me from a lot of that pain and suffering. That word almost works better, past tense. Your, your behavior was excused. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. It's not that there was an excuse right. for it, but it was excused. It was understandable. It was you know, right. relatable for but I guess, our, our problem. Yeah, for your, like, what you're talking about with emotions. Like, having that uh, pain be excused, or that behavior be excused, gave me a little bit of space to not feel so, like such a piece of shit that I could actually look at some of my actions and take some responsibility for it. Well, and that's, I, I think that's what I love about... Maybe some of the lenses I'm able to or, or I've been given through my training and everything. It's like I feel like there is that same level of excused or understandable actions after the drugs go away, too. You know what I mean? Like that's still understandable that we got modeled this negative thing and we're just kind of recreating it over and over again that makes more sense to me than just i'm a piece of shit or yeah. god i got rid of the drugs and i still can't get my shit together or whatever i want to say in that moment yeah right um another couple things the the, our, the narcotics anonymous literature says uh out of the step working guides principle of integrity can be quite complex well yeah we figured that out in the first 40 Clearly. minutes here uh we, we got that but it is integrity more than anything else that commands our ability to practice other principles. In fact, integrity is knowing which principles we need to practice mm -hmm. in a given situation and in what measure. For instance, we're standing outside a meeting one night and happen to be a part of a group that begins gossiping about someone else in the program. Let's say they're discussing the affair our best friend's spouse is having. And we know it to be true because we heard it from our best friend the previous night. 
Knowing what to do in this situation will probably take every ounce of integrity we possess. So which spiritual principles do we need in this situation? Honesty? Tolerance? Respect? Restraint? It's probably our first impulse to rush in, condemning the gossip because we know how much it would hurt our friend to have such private matters discussed publicly. But by doing so, we may confirm the gossip's truth and so hurt our friend more. Or we may end up self-righteously humiliating the people involved in the gossip. Most of the time, it isn't necessary to prove we have integrity by confronting a situation as, that we don't approve of. There are a couple of things we could do in this situation. We could either change the subject, or we could excuse ourselves and walk away. Either of these choices would send a subtle message about our feelings, and at the same time, allow us to be true to our own principles and spare our friend as much as possible. That was a lot. Yeah, that was a lot. What do you think, though? Integrity being the... the what spiritual principle to put in place and how much of it to put in place. I, I got a feeling Billy's going to love this because he talks about it all the time. Yeah, that's, I mean, to me, that's the crux of the whole process of recovery. <laughs> you know, it's like that's what I'm constantly trying to do. The, the thing I thought about most there was it's so much easier to do in situations that don't require an immediate response. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, I have an issue at work with a coworker, so I can go back and talk to my sponsor or other people in my support group and then figure out what the best way to deal with those things are. It's way harder when you're confronted with situations like that need an immediate response or when you're like immediately in a situation. Mm -hmm. well, then it's way harder. But like in a situation like, like that, you know, they're talking about there, like, yeah, I mean, I don't know. For me, it's not that difficult to just think oh yeah i gotta get out of this i don't you know what i mean like hey guys i gotta go i'll talk to you later and just bail <laughs> like, huh. you know huh. i mean that's probably in that case what i would do just... i felt like both of their suggestions in my mind don't really do what they need to do like i i, I don't know they feel like avoiding well bit. and i thought the harder part for me is not to just jump in and be right in the gossip be like oh yeah did you fucking hear that <laughs> it's crazy <laughs> i mean it? but that's what i've learned about my personality and that's right. what i mean by being a person of integrity like i know that's the wrong thing to do but i tend to be a person that gets caught up in gossip and mm. we'll talk and it fucking happens at work you know and i gotta own that and be like that's a thing that i do i don't like it about myself so i need to be aware when those situations are coming up like to me that's integrity it's not that oh i never gossip like no i fucking do like the integrity comes of like i don't like that about myself and now i want to try to do something different hmm. Buddhism, it would be wise speech. Like you, you wouldn't want to talk about people behind their back. And so, if I think it's practice, practice. If you already had that value, that integrity value in mind, if you came into a gossip situation, you would just be like, mm, "I don't do that." You know, hmm. that that could be your immediate response. You know, if you know you're talking about like not having that reactionary response ready. But if you don't, if you practice wise speech, you don't gossip. So I'm not taking part in this. <laughs> and you don't have to you don't have to like you know because it seemed like that little story you read was like there's a lot of reading into it like yeah, yeah, yeah. several layers and you wouldn't have to mess around with all that overthinking hmm. yeah that's my i'm way too unemotionally intelligent to be that deep into the well if i say this then they're gonna know and no 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 well know. that's where i like think... who's doing what <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking like with, with authenticity instead of integrity I could just stand there and say hey guys I Look, I've been working on not like gossiping and stuff, and I, I I think we probably all feel better. Can we talk about something else? Like, mm -hmm. you guys can talk about that after I That'd be leave good. for the night, or but I feel like that piece at least gets the chance to express my emotions and how I feel. Whereas the pieces they gave me, it was like, no, nope, tend to your own shit and just roll out and don't share any of that, or don't give them the opportunity to be their eyes and ears either by sharing that with them mm -hmm. where you're at in a non-judgmental way, or you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Just didn't feel like it hit the mark. Billy, I don't think you're going to like this one because this one sounds like <laughs> uh, integrity as, as being whole. 
but this is out of our literature. It says, integrity is the state of being fully integrated. Our actions, our thinking, our feelings, our ideals, and our values all match up. It takes a long time for a lot of us to get here, and longer still for us to feel like it's real. More and more, we, we are able to bring our behavior into alignment with our values and beliefs rather than our feelings and reactions. I kind of disagree with that last line because that sounds like it separates it again and isn't fully integrated, but whatever. <laughs> what do you think about that? I mean, I think I like that. I, that's actually what I believe is happens. You know what I mean? I become to know what my values are. And then by practicing them in my life, that becomes a part of who I am, you know? I don't have to think so much like now. Usually if I say I'm going to be somewhere, I'm there, you know. And and the other thing about integrity is like if you're a person of integrity, like if something happened, let's say, you know, we do this podcast all the time. If for one week you just didn't show up or something, I wouldn't be like, ah, Jason, there goes all his fucking integrity. He now has (laughs) none. It would be like, oh, shit, something seriously must have happened, like, or, or. But what if something seriously didn't happen? Wouldn't you, wouldn't you judge my integrity a little bit afterwards if I was uh, just like, ah, yeah, I didn't get up, Billy. I didn't feel like I would. Speak. Once, I, well, I'd I be would. like, that's pretty weird. Like, why the fuck? You're like, huh, right. that's odd. I would definitely judge the fuck out. But what I mean is I wouldn't immediately be like, oh, you can't trust him anymore. He's uh, never a person that goes where he said, you know, it's like. But anyway, yeah, I I think that's what happens is like I become a person who lives by my values, what I think is important. And, you know, that lines up with my actions. I, I guess the one piece of it I didn't like was it it started in the beginning talking about we got all these things into alignment, our feelings, our reactions, our emotions, our our values, like they all came together. And then at the end, it was like and then we make sure to line up our 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 behaviors with you know, our values and not our emotions. And I was like, ah, I think our emotions should be in there too. Yeah, they they matter. should be in there too, for I don't sure. Know. It's kind of interesting. Do matter. Well, and the part of that that I guess I struggle with is like, for me, my thinking is the way I interpret being an addict. Like, my thinking is in, I mean, my disease is in my thinking. And so m- most time, like, my first thought can be kind of fucked up. You know, like it can be very self-centered and very like get what I want kind of thing. And sometimes I got to take a minute to recognize that. And I don't know. I mean, I don't know if that's ever going to change. I guess Mm. maybe in some way it does. But hmm. so I, I came across this reading and it talked about the idea that we measure integrity when we're trying to measure it through our different quizzes and tests and, and scientific searches in one-time increments generally like do you show up with integrity in this situation here Hmm. um and it says philosophers have been particularly concerned to understand what it is for a person to exhibit integrity throughout a lifetime which is a little different um and so it's like questions what is it to be a person of integrity ordinary discourse about integrity involves two fundamental institutions first that integrity is primarily a formal relation one has to oneself or between parts or aspects of oneself, right? So that's the first piece. It's about our relationship to us. And then second, integrity is connected in an important way to acting morally. In other words, there are some substantive or normative constraints on what it is to act with integrity. So this is this is kind of where I started to go off the rails with the integrity versus authenticity <laughs> idea and, you know, do I want to be morally constrained um, by whatever the morals Normative. of the time are? Right, <laughs> right. Right. Whatever that is, right? Um, you know, Kim put in, my, my wife, Kim, she said she had always heard of integrity as doing the right thing when nobody's watching, which I think is our kind of our base level, yeah. like that's what we tell Lewis people. Quote. Yeah, that's C.S. Yeah. Lewis. I don't know, though. I feel like we have a hard time doing integrity or whatever when people are watching, or authenticity at least. Well, and that first part of that, when you talked about, you know, it's like the in touch with ourself, the oneness part, I think that's the most important piece. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what it means when nobody's looking. So, you know, I'll, do I do the right thing when nobody's around, you know? Yeah, but this is where this gets confusing for me. And this is where I like the authenticity better, right? So, okay, say I'm a person that believes in vacuuming my floor every Sunday and, you know, 
doing some house cleaning on Sundays. That's what, that's important to me. That's just what I like to do. And the people in my house see that and they know I do that. And I get probably some praise for doing that. Oh yeah, Jason's that great guy. He does his cleaning every Sunday morning. This place looks awesome, right? And then one Sunday, I don't feel like it. So what would be right for me in that day, if nobody's around, I might sit around and tend to myself and read a book and drink a tea or something. But I might feel like that's the wrong thing because of integrity. Because integrity says I'm the guy that does the same thing when nobody's looking. And yet when nobody was looking, I felt like I wouldn't be judged for a second. And I actually had the space to give myself some time for myself, which authentically would be great. But an integrity's lens might look like a bad thing in my own head. It doesn't even matter if other people judge me with it. And that's where I'm like, this gets weird trying to live up to this code. And you know what I mean? Like, Oh, yeah, that's where it depends on what's important to you, you know. I mean, that's where you have to figure out what your values are. I, I came across this paragraph. It says, authenticity is essentially being true to who you say you are and to what you say you believe. Integrity is being true to principles external to yourself. A principle is a self-evident truth that bears up over time across generations and within most cultures. So, like, I, I guess the problem with integrity is we're going to feel like there's a certain place we have to be. Oh, my sister invited me to her kid's birthday party. Integrity says I go because I don't have nothing else, even if it's not the right thing for me today. Like integrity sets me up to do the so so-called right thing in a situation, even when it's harmful to me. It never says like, hey, integrity is doing the right thing, whether people are watching or not, as long as it's still correct and doesn't harm you. <laughs> You know what I mean? So I, I walk around and I don't know if other people do this or not, but I walk around and I tend to skew to putting too much pressure on myself and trying to figure out what everybody else is going to think of my integrity. And look, I'm not actively doing this, but when a situation comes up, I'm worried. What will they think if I do the right thing for me here? They're going to judge me. And they are because I'm doing stuff they don't like. But there's a certain level of thinking about other people that should be involved when you live and interact and communicate in a world with other people. And that's going to affect, I think, the level of, I don't want to use the word intimacy, I don't know if that's exactly right, but that's going to affect the quality of the relationships that you have in your life. Like, you know, yeah, every situation that I come into, like my feelings and whatever matter, but so should my wife and my kids like they all have some level of concern or should at least to me should have some level of concern in there as well it's not i mean if it comes to like life or death like if i do this thing i'm gonna have a mental fucking breakdown well then it's probably all about me but if it's a case where well i'm gonna be a little uncomfortable going to my kids fucking recital because i don't feel that great and i got a headache and i'd rather stay home you know mm. i'm probably gonna go to the recital because my kid it means something to them like and and that's the the balancing it out you but know, does it of, mean something to them do you even ever bother to ask or do you just assume that you know what's good for them um well in that case i, I may assume or i may ask you know okay. it depends on what the plans are so right. or we may talk about it ahead of time you know i just want to put out there that should is could with shame all the fuck over it <laughs> that's all i want to put out there no i i don't I don't disagree with what you're saying, but I, I don't think it leaves room for us to do what's right for us. I think we constantly have this judge in our head saying what we should do and shouldn't do, and it doesn't leave room for us to show up and feel different on that day or to show up and think, man, maybe taking care of my headache is more important. Maybe my kid doesn't even give a fuck. In fact, maybe my kid would prefer I'm not there because they get stressed when I'm watching them. Maybe they'd rather see me see a video of them performing. Like, I just walk through life being so hard on myself about what I'm supposed to be doing and not supposed to be doing and all these ways that I needed to act with integrity and then I can judge myself for not doing it later. Wow, that's yeah. <laughs> um and and it's just really, really hard. Um this gentleman, Stephen Carter, wrote a book in nineteen ninety six and he came up with a framework in his mind for determining acts of con integrity. Uh he says, you discern what is right and wrong. Oh, yeah. Nice and simple. You just discern what's right and wrong, right? Then you do what you have discerned, even at personal cost. And then you declare openly you're acting on what you have discerned is right. That's the framework for acting in integrity. 
What? Yeah. <laughs> well, I think that, and so we were talking about, you know, everybody judging each other's integrity. That is probably the method with which you discern your own integrity by well, judging yeah. others. Sorry, I didn't mean to like cut yeah. you off there. No, but that's exactly, we, when I say the judgment of others, what's really happening is we have this encapsulated in our own brain. We have our own inner critic constantly judging us from the standpoint of others. That's what I'm really talking about. It, it doesn't mean a fuck less about the people outside this building. It actually means the person in our head that's constantly taking the lens of what the world will think about us and telling us all the time, oh, yeah, you did that one wrong. You should have did this. It, it's not really the people out there that are going to judge me. It's me. Right. But it's judging from them in my head. That's where I, I get all fucked up. So, yeah, f gathering from all the discussion, it seems like integrity done right is extremely personal, using your word authenticity, too. Um, is there, like, a community integrity, though? I'm trying to, like, like, a community acting together has integrity around certain values, like... But then, I don't know where I'm going with this, but like, and then it, it, you, it boils down to like, there's personal integrity and then there's like community integrity. And like, uh, within a community, you, you kind of take in that, with, like an individual would take in the community standards, like it or not, or maybe absolutely reject it. But that, I mean, anyway, from the whole conversation, from me listening to you guys talk, it just sounds like integrity is like extremely personal, just that sounded like a jab. Yeah. No. During this whole conversation, listen to you guys talk. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jenny. No, no, no. Jump no. in, damn it. <laughs> I, well, there were blocks of time where I was just like really processing what you guys were saying, but it wasn't a jab. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm my taking this hurt. jab because my integrity, right. It's my internal ah. judge of, that the world is judging me. Um, so I, I read a couple of situations that were interesting. This talked about, the idea of you you know if you're a boss at a company you would want to hire people with integrity right that's what people are going we want people with integrity that's a people lot of what i come up with when i was doing a little research was yeah, it yeah. applies so much to work yeah. and how you measure hiring employees and how you're well, yeah. who you're but looking so, for like but it's so personal like if the business probably has its own integrity Oh, it does. Well, there's capitalism definitely, yeah, definitely has yeah, an integrity. Yeah, so yeah, there's definitely. It's like we don't want a people. We a don't want to hire people with integrity there that you know isn't necessary. Yeah, they want <laughs> right. to hire people with their integrity, not people with integrity. They want the business's integrity. Right. Well, the the interesting thing was, I think this big thing, and, and like your point now, all the research is on that. Why? Yeah. Because companies put all the money into the research yeah, on that to try to get that. employees yeah. that do what the fuck they want them to do anyway um it, it gave situations and it said hey listen this is what you're looking for people with integrity but be prepared for this because this is what you also get with people with integrity um so it says what you will end up getting uh you will get people that don't show up as yes people they will show up as no people and they will tell you that they don't see what they think you're saying they see like if you're saying hey this workspace is a family and we're all connected they'll be the people that will step right. up to your office and say no it's not yeah this shit isn't no fucking family <laughs> right so be prepared for that if you hire people with Families integrity are so dysfunctional so <laughs> <laughs> uh you know they will tell you what's wrong in your office place um they will be rigid about principles this is another thing about integrity which made me kind of was like the red herring that threw me into like wait a minute is this good because people with integrity are black and white and rigid and generally in my understanding that is not a healthy functional adult place to be um but it says you know they they seem stubborn when discussing values and beliefs because people with integrity are consistently stubborn and they believe they are right i was like oh <laughs> so these are some of the drawbacks to integrity um there's another thing that came up while I was researching integrity that I thought would be interesting to bring up here. It's called the fundamental attribution error. Yeah, I know. I didn't know what that meant either, so I had to look into what it meant. Fundamental attribution error. When I do bad things, it's because I know what's going on in my life. I understand the internal pressures I'm under, so I get why I have to do this thing instead of what I would normally do. But for others, I don't know the internal circumstances, so I just say they're a bad person. Um, people all crack under pressure, but we can't see it that way in the moment because when we're calling it out in that person, we're not getting what we wanted from them. 
that's what's happening in that moment, right? My wife doesn't have integrity when she didn't remember to make my breakfast sandwich for the next morning if she said she was going to. You know, my kids don't have integrity when they don't get the good grades or do the homework when nobody's looking. But it's all reflections of what they didn't do that would have pleased me and ways I'm less happy because they didn't do it. But I can't understand for them when they didn't do it because I can't see their internal stuff. I can't measure their emotional state. I have no clue if they're actually physically capable of doing that homework when nobody's looking. I assume they are because I say, of course you are. You sit down, you fucking do it, right? I don't know. But I give myself sometimes the pass because, of course, I can. I understand. I was struggling that week. It was a tough day and so-and-so cut me off. And, but I can't see that inside others. And so I tend to judge more harshly. I don't have the excuses for them. And I thought that was an interesting take about that. Yeah, and I do think that's definitely uh, uh, more applies to trying to measure other people's integrity or look at their integrity or see if someone else has integrity. Like, I don't know that that specific, what he's talking about there, applies so much to me and how I feel about my own internal integrity, but it definitely applies to, like, if I'm trying to say, Oh, is this a person of integrity? Like, is this a person that I want to have in my life? Right. You know, it definitely could affect the way that I measure. But, like, at least I think in those situations for myself, like, compassion is a big part of my moral system. So I tend to give people a pass a little more. Well, <laughs> let me let me ask you this, right? Because as I'm reading this and thinking it through, this is the one side of the coin. The person who, you know in order for them to take on that they did something wrong would be would be death basically and that's what their nervous system is screaming like you can't see that about yourself or or, or we can't exist anymore so that's one version of this where we can give ourselves the pass and everybody else not so much but i'm picturing people pleasers would be the exact opposite right they'd be yeah. the people where everybody else had reasons why they didn't live up to shit but for yourself you're the fucking vicious critic all the time mm -hmm. and it's like everybody else gets a pass oh yeah they probably had a bad day they probably going through something but for me there's no passes ever i'm so hard on myself right yeah. like so I could see that version existing, too. Yeah. As a recovering people pleaser, I can confirm that. Again. Yeah, that's yeah. me a lot, too. Yeah, so that's not, like, and again, it's this place of, like, oh, we're all talking about integrity and trying to live up to this thing, but maybe if we stop trying to live up to integrity, we could find more happiness. Maybe living up to authenticity actually would make us happier than integrity, because in my mind, the way we've talked about it today, authenticity and integrity can't exist at the same place, or at least they don't line up all together. Right. To do one means to not do the other, at least at times. And that's where I'm like, I don't know if this is the right thing to aim for anymore for me. Yeah, it's hard to say. I mean, I don't want to take everything to extremes, though. It's, you know, well, I, I mean, I'm not even thinking extremes personally. Not with this one. Like, I just I don't. Billy, if you said I'll do something for you next Saturday and when next Saturday came, you called me and said, Jason, I, I just think the best thing for me to do is to rest my body today. I don't want you, even if I'm fucking highly disappointed because I've been waiting months for us to get this thing finished at my house, right? I'm still happier that you took care of yourself. I don't ever want you to live up to a contract, quote unquote, that we agreed upon just because we agreed upon it. I don't want that. I don't want you to be a man of integrity in that moment. I want you to fucking take care of yourself, Billy, because I love you. That's more important than whatever I want it done. Yeah, and I'm trying to figure out, is there a difference of I guess it depends on what you're looking at as integrity and authenticity like, if I went to a local store and they said hey we're going to give you this deal on your whatever cable cell phone whatever we're local but we're going to give you this deal we can do it for ten dollars a month and I'm like that's amazing and then I come back in three months and he's like look we've been running this promo deal right but I I'm having trouble feeding my kids I don't want him to honor that ten dollar a month contract anymore I want him to raise my fucking bills so his kids can eat that's what I'm saying. Like integrity, integrity would be him living up to that. I don't want him to do that. That's awful. Can't your integrity be your authenticity? Yes. Okay. That'll work. But I don't think that's what we're <laughs> aiming for when we're aiming for integrity. I think integrity incorporates this societal level or someone else's level point of view values to some extent. And well, where do I go to extremes? I mean, and it's whatever. It's like, well, maybe... You know, you're a person that wants to harm other people or whatever. It's like, well, that's not okay. Mm -hmm. Like, maybe your authentic self likes 
hurting people. <laughs> like right. that's not okay. And that is an extreme. That's why I was like, it's hard to take it to extremes. Yeah. You know, so we do have some we have to a base level maybe of moral code of like well, maybe we that's the community, the yeah. community integrity I was well, trying to put together. <laughs> in in my world, like the authenticity to come back at that person who wants to hurt people is for us to step up with integrity or authenticity or whatever we're saying then and fucking care about them until we can help them heal. Right. Because I don't think anybody wants to hurt people at their base authentic core or whatever. I watch right. way too much Discovery Channel, true crime, <laughs> serial killer, crazy stuff. <laughs> mm. <laughs> That'll corrupt your brain. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, I I don't know. I would say uh, obviously I, I'm not completely sure what integrity is, or if it exists, or if it's a real thing, or if it's a thing. Even if it is real, if it's a thing, I want anymore necessarily. Um, but I do think this has been a fascinating fucking conversation about it. Yeah. It's been neat to dive into it. So go out there, fuck integrity, steal from your stores, <laughs> do what you got to do. Chaos. Tell them, tell them recovery sort of sent you. Fuck it. Be Whatever. your integral authentic self <laughs> and yeah and be kind to yourself and stop putting so much pressure on yourself have a great week did you like this episode share it with people you think might get something out of it check out the rest of our episodes at recovery sort of.com also while you're there you can find ways to link up with us on facebook twitter instagram reddit youtube anything we're always looking for new ideas Got an idea you want us to look into? Reach out to us.